Okay, um, so once again, this is, my name is Hakeem Floyd, uh, the local veteran employment representative. And um, before I hand the, the um, session over to our representative, our employer today, I would like to also promote for career source today, or to, excuse me, there will be, um, share the screen for you guys real fast. There will be, there is a, a virtual job fair here um, online for the R3 program, which is the Rapid, Recover, Rapid Response Recovery Program for Career Source. Uh, it will be an all day event from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., depending on which kind of career field you, and um, profession you're looking to go into. I will make sure to post this flyer and this information um, to your emails and also inside of the chat so you can review and see um, to, to attend the job fair. All right, so now, now, like I said, um, today what we're going to have, we're going to have Mr. Donald Paul Lively here from Cognizant. He is the senior recruiter for the Veterans Affairs. Um, I can admit and attest to, since I've been here for the last three years, he has worked uh, pretty closely to career source. He has promoted and he has also hired hundreds of veterans directly from career source into the cognizant um, um, company. Um, they are a top 20 in the nation's hiring for the uh, top 10, 20 for the nation's hiring within the nation. So they are a, a very reliable company and they are, are very friendly related, uh, related. So I'm gonna hand it over to Paul now. Paul, the floor is yours, sir. Thanks, Hakeem. I appreciate that. And um, <clears throat> yes, we have worked very closely with CareerSource uh, for several years now um, on all sorts of different types of positions and projects and things like that. And we enjoy the partnership. And Hakeem, we look forward to continuing that partnership um, in many more years to come. A um, little bit about me. I am the lead recruiter for the Tampa RDC or Regional Development Center. Um, mostly in the Tampa area. However, I do work outside of the Tampa area. Um, and also, before we get started, the, with COVID-19 hitting and everything like that, there is a new normal. Everybody works from home. Everybody does things remotely. I am no different. So I have a two-year-old that is at home. So if you hear any kind of random screams or hollers or anything like that, that's him. Um, so I apologize for that in advance. Um, he kind of has a way of seeing on camera he'll might he might even walk up and and get on camera and say hi to everybody um so just want to give you guys that heads up as well um <clears throat> but a little bit about me i started with cognizant about four years ago um before cognizant i worked for dod contractors uh doing recruiting for top secret security clearances um different things like that for uh caci and l3 communications um once i left uh, the DOD, I came over to Cognizant, and I have been doing um, veteran recruiting for them for over three years now. Um, with that being said, veteran recruiting is something that is very near and dear to my heart because I myself have a, am a service-connected disabled veteran um, as well. <clears throat> and I have sat in the shoes that a lot of the veterans are sitting in now or have sat in in the past where they have basically been voluntold what to be doing for the last six years or 10 years or 20 years, however long you were in the military and don't necessarily know how to write a resume, don't necessarily know how to apply for a job or follow up with a recruiter or how that situation works. Because as we know, whenever it's the needs of the army or needs of the Marine Corps, they tell us where to go and where to work and what to do and when to do it. Um, so that can be a little bit challenging for veterans at times, because when you're told something to do for 20 years um, and you know you know you, you try to open up and do something different it gets it gets a little bit different and a little bit difficult for you to to you know conform to what everybody else is doing outside of the civilian out of the military community um, one of the big things that I like to do whenever I speak at these engagements is I can tell you all day about cognizant and what we have to offer and what we can do and everything like that. However, that's not beneficial to you guys. I'm here to help you guys. I'm here to help you guys 
answer questions. I'm here to help you guys get information. If you need information on how to contact recruiters, how to apply for jobs, what should I put on my resume? What shouldn't I put on my resume? Um, how do I communicate with any kind of civilian that may not understand my experiences? Um, and really dive in on a personal level with you guys as much as I can on different issues that maybe you guys have in your job search. Um, maybe it's a position that you're looking at in within Cognizant um, and you're not hearing back from someone. What kind of information can I help you provide? Maybe you're applying and you're not getting any kind of response from civilian uh, employers because they're not understanding your resume. I see a lot of military resumes with a lot of military acronyms on them. If your resume has a lot of military acronyms on it, chances are that resume is going to go into the bottom of the pile. And it's not because we don't value your experience. It's because you're basically speaking English whenever the recruiter only understands Spanish. So that's that's the easiest way for me to um, kind of explain that that skills gap and that knowledge gap. Um, I work a lot with IT professionals and we might have some network security IT professionals on this call. You guys have you know, heard of vulnerability scanners and vulnerability management and things like that and heard of Nexus. Um, well, Nexus vulnerability scanner is also used in a military setting. However, because of OPSEC, that scanner is called something completely different. So whenever I was working with the DOD, I was able to learn that. So transitioning from the DOD to civilian side, I have known that is called something else in the military and looked at resumes and see you know network security engineers have that on their resume and look at someone who's looking at network security positions and say oh no you don't have the experience that i need so here here's your resume back and then i'm like no that's that's the same experience they just call it something different because it's the military and they have to because we don't necessarily want our enemies knowing what we are using and when we're using it um so with all that being said, I'll stop there. Um, I think Hakeem, this has the ability for them to chime in and ask questions and things like that. So I really wanna have an open forum with you guys and answer any questions that I possibly can. And it doesn't need to be cognizant specific. If you have a question about a resume, if you have a question about experience, if you have a question about interview skills, anything like that, I would be more than happy to help you guys and give you guys some insider information on what it's like, how it works, what happens, and how to work around those kind of flaws and and issues with systems and things like that to help you guys get to the employment that you guys really want. So at this time, we're going we're gonna to open up the floor to everybody. Um, if anybody has any questions uh, for Paul, you can go ahead and start. Yes, I have a question. Or, excuse me, anyone else? No, go ahead, Gilbert. Okay. Yes, um, I went through the process at Cognizant um, a couple years back and, uh, of course, ended up landing an interview, was successful through that process. But then when it came down to, um, I guess, a lot of the technology to go ahead and get started, um, I had some uh, personal situations with my grandmother and I had to leave town. My question is, because I will be leaving Tampa soon again, is there any cognizant uh, company out of Brevard County? So that's a great question. Um, Brevard County, we don't really have any kind of like physical office or anything like that. Um, but as I was telling you guys earlier, um, Cognizant has with COVID become very remote. And I see a shift in that where even companies that we supported and things that we supported in the past are now probably going to be remote even permanently after uh, COVID. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I think that there's opportunities with Cognizant, no matter where you sit, no matter where you live. Um, however, there are more opportunities with Cognizant if you sit within 
one of our RDCs or regional development centers. You'll hear me say RDC or ODC a lot today. RDC just stands for Regional Development Center, which is like our Tampa area. Tampa area is an RDC for Cognizant. And then we have um, about 10 of those RDCs throughout the nation. Um, and then we have ODCs, which are smaller elements that may be, you know, one office size or one building or something very small where we do an operation at, and that's why we call them operational development centers. But yes, to answer your question, Gilbert, there should be opportunity for you in Brevard County. Excellent. Stephen, I see you have your hand raised. Go ahead. Yeah, with your question. yeah thanks. So um, I've been you know, off active duty for a while, and um, um, early in my career, I, um, <clears throat> when I was active duty, I, I had top secret. And then early in my career, I worked a lot with defense uh, contractors, and I had top secret. <clears throat> I don't currently have a clearance. And a lot of the positions I see come through, they're looking for somebody with a clearance, but um, it's like they're not willing to consider someone that, you know, has had a clearance but doesn't currently have an active clearance. And I'm just curious, because um, I get I get looked over those type of positions. I'm just curious, is there a way in which you can um, make it more attractive where they would actually bring you in and go ahead and go through the you know, re re-clearing process? Yeah, so Stephen, I wish there was a better answer for me, for you, but unfortunately, just for what I've seen in DOD, uh, the answer is gonna be no, because a lot of those programs and things like that, they're moving at such fast paces that it already takes long enough, even if you're uh, TS or TSSCI, whichever one you have is within scope to have that transferred over from what program you were on whenever you were active duty to the DOD contract that you're working on takes a really long time. And it takes probably six months to, I'd say nine months. If, you're, uh, if your clearance is not adjudicated or within scope to get that re-adjudicated and go through the whole investigation process and do your dash 27 and everything like that. Um, so that's the reason why that issue exists. Um, I, I don't want to say no completely or 100% no, um, because there's definitely smaller contractors, um, subcontractors that will take the experience and then pick up your, um, pick up your, uh, clearance. And then, um, basically what they do is they make you sign a contract saying that, Hey, I'll get adjudicated and within scope but you have to stay with me at least three years and sign a non-compete that you're not just going to get my clearance and then leave for another bigger uh, pr like prime contractor or something like that. Thanks. Thanks. No problem. Please don't be shy. Ask questions, ask away. I know you guys... I know you guys have resume questions. I know you guys have application questions because I, I have them myself at times. Dave, Benson, go ahead. I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, I came in a little late. So uh, on the Cognizant, what exactly is that and how uh, do you guys, uh, I mean, what is it you can do for us? Are you guys a company that actually do hiring or just doing uh, basically this service? Uh, no, so we are a, it's a great question, Dave. So we are a Fortune 500 company. We are actually 196 on Fortune 500's list. Um, we do about 16 to $17 billion worth of revenue every year. Um, and we employ right around 300,000 people worldwide with about 50 to 70,000 of that being locally in the United States. Um, Cognizant is an IT services company. Um, we compete against companies such as Deloitte, PwC, um, Ernst & Young, companies such as that. Um, however, um, in the services industry, you know, we got into um, about 10 or 15 years ago actually providing people services um, where we were going in and selling our softwares, our licenses and things like that. And then people were coming to us and saying, hey, you know, you guys are doing a great job with this. Can you provide, you know, call center support? Can we provide 
um, any kind of help with um, claims or anything like that. So Cognizant also owns a proprietary software that processes, I'd say about 75% of all insurance claims in the United States. And being able to have that proprietary software and license out that software to other organizations, we then are able to also provide them with claims representatives that also adjudicate those claims when people have them and things like that. So in short, to answer your question, Dave, um, we have everything from entry level call center positions, remote call center positions, part time call center positions, all the way up to um, top secret security clearance, network engineers, um, Java developers, .NET developers, project management, project engineers, all of that stuff. Um, so we have HR positions, we have positions all over the place. How about something logistics? Because I've been, you know, retired Air Force Air Transportation in the last 11 years. I've worked, uh, you know, uh, log cap uh, and uh, on the on the DoD side and uh, international narcotics and law enforcement on the, the State Department side as transportation manager. And I just had it uh, seem to have a heck of a time finding something now. Um, in the in the in the Tampa area without having to you know, relocate again, and so uh, you know you got anything in that area? Um, not as far as like logistics go. So quick question: uh, a lot of hands on SAP experience, probably then. Well, not SAP specifically, but multiple uh, systems that do the same thing. Most uh, like State Department was very propri proprietary. We had to design. You know, basically a, a SAP uh, equivalent, not equivalent because it's a huge thing, but uh, clone system, right? That right. does the same thing, but uh, you know they're very secretive in what they do. And and on the DoD side, uh, I was with DynCor International, and they have their own system that they built as well. So you know, and then of course in the military, every you know you got all the different systems that basically do the same thing. Gotcha. So what I'm going to do is at the end of this, Hakeem, I'm going to share all my contact information, email, cell phone, all of that information. And Dave, questions like that, I would love to have time to actually speak with you about and help you with. Um, but unfortunately, today we're just probably not going to have time to always, you know, di dive that deep into questions. So I will share that information with each and every one of you. And I please, it, I'll encourage you to reach out to me um, via email, text, or call, or whatever. Um, and I'll do my best to definitely help you out with longer questions like that. Um, Sonia, I see you have your hand raised. Um, what is your question? Do, uh, good morning. Um, I am a previous Intel analyst. I did that for about 10 years up in DC, moved back down here. Um, I have about three years of project management experience and I don't want to do Intel at all. Um, I'm, I was more than happy to uh, my <laughs> clearance last that's a headache in itself um but i'm looking to just um get m more so not in the contracting space because i think i have been a contractor long enough um but more so in the organizational support project management um business analysis i i guess so my underlying question is uh, how much weight do they place on certifications? Um, because of my lack of, you know, like a, a breadth of experience in project management. So certification is a really big deal um, with us, especially whenever it comes to project management and also when it comes to IT. Um, certifications are a big deal because a certification lets me know you can actually do the work like you have hands on experience you've gone through a class you have shown that there's a problem you've done it and you have shown that you have done it well and they have given you a certification for it education is also important um but i would honestly say that within the last five to six years in recruiting i've seen a material change from I mean, if you, were, if you were looking for an IT job or a project management job 10 years ago, you had to have a bachelor's degree. Without a doubt, 100% had to have a bachelor's degree. Nowadays, that's the 
case. You can get a well-paying project management, well-paying IT job with just certifications. Um, so to answer your question, Sonia, I think that it becomes more about selling your skills and what you have done in the past as an Intel analyst. Um, because there's a lot of project management that goes into being an Intel analyst, you know, working in a skiff for 12 hours a day. And because uh, I used to do FMV analysts um, out at Fort Bragg and working in those skiffs for 12 hours a day and managing all of that video that comes in and looking at all that video that comes in and the attention to detail that that takes. And, you know, knowing when a target is leaving its compound um, at what time and figuring out those tendencies are the same tendencies that you can figure out whenever you're looking at reports for spending um, and different things like that. So I think it's more so understanding that you don't have the experience that they want, but then rebranding your experience that you have and letting them know how quickly you're able to adapt and learn and basically let them know that, hey, you know, no, I don't have this exact experience, but this directly correlates to the experience that I had in the military. And I was able to do it quickly and in somewhat of a stressful environment in most times and still, you know, operate at a high level and do a good enough job where I was given accommodation medals. I was given, you know, uh, certificates of appreciation and things like that. Just really hone in and highlight different things that you have. Um, as a matter of fact, Sonia, we are working on a project within Cognizant for project management where we are taking entry level project managers and trying to work with them and get them on the off the ground through a training program where they come in, they take a 16 week course, they're guaranteed employment with Cognizant um, and then they come out of that course and then they're able to be um, uh, resources for us within our company. And the big th obstacle that they're really having with that is um, with our company, we require a lot of like upselling skills. So, okay, you came in um, looking for a Hyundai Elantra, but I came out and sold you a, a BMW 5 Series BMW kind of thing, you know? Um, yeah, you wanted a car, but what you ended up wanting and, and what we were able to, you know, do for you actually was better for you and you ended up leaving with a better quality product. Um, so we're really looking for something along those lines, like you were saying, um, where we can you know, work with you. Um, but the big thing that I really try to explain to everybody, especially my military um, men and women, is when you went into the military, you know, if I asked everybody that was on this call, you probably came out of the military at E5, E6, E7. Maybe even we have some O2, O3, O4s. Um, I'm not sure. But when we all went into the military, we all went in at either E1, E2, E highest E3, um, or O1, O2. And we started at the bottom and worked our way completely up. And the problem that we have with a lot of military hiring when it comes to an aspect of you know uh more skill sets it things like that is when you're leaving the military you expect to still be in a position within a civilian contractor or a civilian employer as still an e7 or an e8 or an 04 or an 05 and the people that are more willing to come in and get their feet wet and start from the bottom and work their way up I think are more successful in finding what they're looking for in, in their job search. Um, now, I'm not saying that you need to go and take a if you're if you're you know cost of living and things like that mandate that you need a twenty to twenty five dollar an hour job. Um, I'm not saying go and take a eight dollar an hour job just because you know you feel like that's where you can get your foot in. But what I am saying is be flexible, be understanding, have an attitude of okay. I'm transitioning out. I'm ready to come into your organization, um, add value to your organization and work my way up from there. I'm not expecting um, 
any kind of handouts or, and I'm not saying that you're looking for a handout, but I'm not expecting to come in and, and be in a management style program or be in a, a, a short, a shortened, you know, path to leadership or anything like that. I'm here to work. I'm here to do a good job and I'm here to be valuable asset to your company and your organization. And I think that will get you far and above some of the, some of the other candidates that I have seen come across, because I'll be honest, I've, I've interviewed E8s and full bird colonels and, and, and lieutenant colonels and things like that. And they fully expect to be at lieutenant colonel and full bird colonel pay and benefits and everything like that. And, and unfortunately in the civilian side, we just can't do that because we, we have to teach you how we work every company, every organization is going to have to teach you how we, how they do things and how they do business, because the way that Cognizant does business is completely different than the way that PwC or, or a Deloitte or Ernst & Young or an Accenture does business. Um, so there's that learning curve. And I think if you have more of a, hey, let me get in here, let me work my way up. I trust my skills. I trust my experience. I think it's a better opportunity to get in and then get to where you actually want to be um, in a short amount of time. Uh, thank you, Donald. No worries. Any other questions? Sean, go ahead. Hey, yeah, good morning. Um, I, I was listening to what you were saying and stuff. And um, for like someone like myself, you know, when I retired from the military, I went straight in like I was on terminal leave and I had to take a day off from school to go get my retired ID card. You know, um, I graduated with associates in limited scope radiology. Then I moved here to Florida in 2016. I was working at Tampa Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. And then they merged with Jenny Stewart and laid 75 of us off. So my boss at that point, she had a bachelor's in health business and administration. So I decided to, once that happened, I came into Voc Rehab and, you know, pursued the same path. So I have my bachelor's in uh, health business and administration, which basically is a split of the business side and then the health services administration side. So I have my certification in human resource development and project management and things of that nature. So, I mean, the biggest thing right now that um, holds me is, you know, knowing my value, you know what I'm saying? And then- right. Um, going to Voc Rehab, they put you in scenarios or situations where they're like, oh, well, you can't do this job because you have this label as a disability. Right. So with radiology is like, um, we don't, I wanted to pursue nuclear medicine originally. And they were like, well, with degenerative joint disease in both your ankles, uh, we don't feel you can pursue that. So you have to find something else. So I found that. And then I get from this program and then I do all the, you know, once I got my bachelor's, signed up on career services, Tampa, and went through a bunch of job interviews and stuff. But the jobs they send you are like $13 an hour at Coca-Cola in the warehouse, Amazon, factory work at a warehouse. You know, if I could stay in, I just do x-ray for 22 an hour versus going working for them. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. There's a lot of people who have these mix. I did an interview last week with uh, Humana, and um, the woman that interviewed me, it was for a um, like uh, it administering like integrating health records and stuff, like mm -hmm. putting in people's health records and stuff. I said, "All right, well, I got the ICD nine ten." certification stuff like that the lady who was doing my interview was literally going to school to pursue the degree that i already have gotcha so she told me i was overqualified things of that nature so i'm looking for something that you know i do project management i got 15 years plus um 
consulting 10 years plus. I run my own company right now. So it's kind of hard for someone in my situation where it's like, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, like, right, you know, like I went through all the programs. Uh, it was like 27 weeks of getting your resume, getting the interview. Um, I got over 30 cert certifications over here for all that kind of stuff. So when I rolled into, uh, you know, Tampa, it was like, oh, we have these programs. And I said, oh, well, I've already completed them, you know. Gotcha. So now I'm kind of just on a back burner. Sure. Understand. So, Sean, what I, what my best advice for you is I honestly think that I might have a couple opportunities in my book of business that may be of interest to you. Um, so what I would like for you to do is as soon as we're done with this, email me your resume and I'm actually going to email that over to a hiring manager. Um, right now we're hiring for some uh, claims positions and I think with your attention to detail with you, you want to be, you know, in nuclear medicine and things like that and your radiology, those are things that you got to get right, right? So I would think that your attention to detail for claims and things like that and then your ICD-10 um, background and uh, certification. I think that will help with the medical part. Um, um, I just don't know where I can do on salary expectations. I think historically those have been in, anywhere in around the, the 40 range. Um, I don't know what you're looking for, um, but I'm willing to help and see what I can do. And I, I can tell you it's, it's not going to be $10, $13 an hour. Um, but I don't know that I can get to 25 or, or 30 or, or anywhere in that range. Um, but I will share all my contact information after we're finished here today. And I would be more than happy to see your resume and see what I could do to help you. Definitely. I uh, greatly appreciate it. Okay, perfect. And Stephen, I see that you have your hand raised. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, one other question I had was, um, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with Cognizant and what you guys do pretty well. Um, do you actually work with um, like um, instead of just employees, like with uh, subcontractors? So one of the things I did when I became unemployed was I set up a company and then I got approval on the federal government's list for um, as a, a veteran, veteran certified business mm -hmm. uh, to do government work. And I'm looking for primes to actually subcontract under and I was right. curious if you guys actually do that as a you're a prime contractor yourself right on on some very small government contracts and I don't think it would be anything that would probably I mean usually those types of questions are coming from either the intelligence area or um, uh, different areas we are usually subs on like logistical things because of our SAP practices and our automation practices and things like that. Um, so usually anything that we have as far as like our top secret security clearance is because a client is requiring us to have that. So we do some work. Um, um, <clears throat> we do work for a client that basically processes all of the um, expenses that people have in the government and the military and basically these people uh, submit their expenses to this program and that company then processes them and pays them for them and because that's government money that has to have a lot of clearances and things like that on it but as of us being a prime on any one uh, project I would probably say we don't really do that Steve. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? If not, we'll wrap it up from my end and then I'll throw it back to Hakeem. Go ahead, Gilbert. Yes, um, I would like to have your information as well so I could go ahead and send you my resume and talk a little bit further about, uh, I guess, um, virtual of Cognizant. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to have a conversation about opportunities within Cognizant with each and every one of you guys here uh, on the call today. Um, so with that being said, uh, go ahead and grab pen and paper um, and I will give you all of my contact information that you guys will need. Or if you have your computer readily available, um, you can go ahead and put that information there as well.
Let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys Paul. a minute or so to get ready, and then I will give you that information. I want to say, Paul, if you like, you can just uh, drop your information inside of the chat, and I'll make sure that I leave the chat up for a couple of minutes after the meeting so they can try to, you know, jot down your information to make it a little bit easier for you if you like. Sure. I'll go ahead and leave it there, too. All right, so my email is up and it is donald.lively at cognizant.com and my direct cell phone number is also up, which is 813-466-0327 and that rings directly to the cell phone that I'm holding right here. Um, so please feel free to uh, email me. It's probably going to be better for you to text me because uh, I, I do have quite a bit of calls and meetings and things like that throughout the day. So if you give me a call or give me a text or drop me an email um, and we can set up 10, 15, 30 minutes um, and uh, have a discussion on how I can help you out, help you out in any way, shape or form. Appreciate it. Thank you. So I, I hope that this was a beneficial call for each and every one of you. Um, again, if I can help you guys in any way, shape or form, please let me know. I've been there. I've been in you guys' shoes. I've been transitioning. I've had certifications. I've had all these. I was a medic in the Army. And man, I thought I was going to join Hillsborough County Fire Rescue and uh, I was going to get out and everything's going to be all fine. And life just has a different way of saying nope that's not what you're gonna do no no way shape or form what i've thought oh you know what i'm gonna get out I'm a, I'm a high speed medic i'm gonna get out and i'm gonna i'm um uh, I'm, I'm gonna go be a corporate recruiter nope never never thought that would ever happen in a million years but you know when you're open to different things and and just want to you know do better for yourself you, you you take some chances on things and life leads you where it leads you um so with that said, if there's no more questions, I will go ahead and throw it back to Hakeem. All right. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate all that information and the resources and um, that you just gave us. Uh, it's beneficial for myself also. I took down a lot of information that you just spoke about too. Um, I do have a question for myself um, that's possibly uh, everybody's wondering. I know you said everything has moved remotely with the positions that's open. For the Tampa Hillsborough area, what is the most highly uh, recruited uh, position that you have right now on hand? Would you happen to know? Call centers, call centers, call, call centers. centers, and not necessarily just call centers. So when I say call center or contact center, um, there's a couple of different skills that we're looking at. We have customer service contact center or call center, where basically um, people call in and update personal information on their insurance policies, beneficiaries. Um, address, contact information, things like that, um, <clears throat> as well as getting more information on what exactly their policy covers and 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 stuff like that. And then we have um, right right now we just finished a project for part time, 100% part time uh, remote uh, customer service people, and all they are doing is whenever people call in to change a. Um, like they they, they want to change their orders or they want to order more stuff like if you if you go to costco and you say you want to order 10 pallets of uh of paper towels or whatever product and then you call back and say well actually i need to order 10 more pallets they take that call they put the order through and they they do that for that client for us um, and then we also, like I discussed, we have claims positions where you're reviewing medical, dental, health claims. Um, you need you, you need some experience with Medicare, Medicaid, um, what what it means to be on the provider side or or on the network side or, or different things like that. So um, there's a lot of different skills and things like that that we're definitely looking for. And yes, everything until the end of 2020 is going to be remote. Um, once 2021 is here, 
they are going to reassess every project that we have and um, essentially they will make a decision on if it's going to stay remote or if it's going to be transitioned back into a actual brick and mortar office. Okay. All right, thank you. No problem. Right. Well, Hakeem, I, I, I would like to say thanks for the opportunity. It is it is very important to me to stay engaged with local community and organizations. Um, so I thank you for thinking of me, thinking of Cognizant, and we look forward to working with you guys exponentially and very closely in the near future. Absolutely, Paul. And I want to say the same, uh, same thing to you, sir. We want to thank you guys for, you know, wanting to hire our veterans and looking to open up your, your arms to us because, like you said, we're looking for employment. We're looking for a home also when it comes to employment. Um, you guys have been tremendously uh, a big impact in the veterans in the veterans population here in, in um, Hillsboro for, like I said, myself, I contest myself with all the help and all the veterans that you guys have hired through Career Source. So I want to thank Cognizant and yourself personally for, you know, attending our meetings and, um, you know, devoting yourself to the veteran population is, is very important to us also. As you, as you as a veteran also understand that it's important to us that we have somebody to look out for us because we all just want to feel important and feel, you know, included into something. So thank you also. Um, once again, I will post up. Uh, I, if you did not see in the chat, I sent a link out for the R3 job fair that we have coming up. Um, <clears throat> we are in the works right now. Uh, Paul, just so you know, also we're in the works right now with uh, James A. Haley for a, a veterans job fair also with the Voc Rehab Department. Um, I will definitely keep you in contact and um, in mind when it, when it comes to the actual put together date, the date that we're shooting for right now is December 8th, I believe, uh, which is a Tuesday. And that's um, virtual? Yes, sir. It will be everything. It will be a virtual uh, a job fair. We have a new platform called the Virtual Premier Platform that we've been using for the past couple of weeks. It's been working out really well. And we've actually just added a new feature that instead of just a, a chat with the employees one-on-one, -on -one, we are moving into a actual virtual in a video conference now with the employer. So there will be a more, in a sense, a virtual face-to-face -face that you'll be able to have with the employer and the veterans also. So um, definitely, um, like I said, I'll be keeping you in tune with that. That'll be coming up within the next couple of weeks. Um, uh, at this time, it is in 50. I was wondering, does anybody have any questions for Paul or myself? That date. It, it, uh, excuse me, sir, Bill, sir, yeah. is that, is, your mic is just a little bit low. Yeah, I know. I got to get a different mic. Sounds better, though. I can hear you a bit more. We're going to, that, uh, that date, early December, may be adjusted. Uh, we're going to have a conference call with, uh, with them this afternoon, and we may adjust that date just a little bit, but when we see that date is set in concrete, then we will end up sending out to everybody and make that public information as to exactly what the date and time is that job fair in conjunction with James A. Haley. All right. All right, thank you for that update, sir. Um, I say, is there any more questions for myself or Paul? Get ready to end meeting. And if there is not, I would like to say thank you, everybody that has attended the meeting today. It's truly appreciated that you guys are here. Um, we will have our next meeting the next two weeks uh, on the 1st of December at the same time, uh, same format, same platform, but there will be a new employer here. Uh, so if anybody or does anybody have anything else, you guys have a great week. Um, stay safe uh, and stay with for work and we're here to help if you need any assistance with career source. Thank you, Hakeem. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Happy Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.
Yes, sir. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. 